Leslie Meredith with Break Bulk Events and Media, and we are on part two of the follow-up to our panel um, this morning at Break Bulk Africa, where we're talking about the challenges facing African shipping, lines, ports, etc. And now we're going to turn our attention to opportunities and or solutions to um, see what our panelists have to say. How can we solve these problems? My name is Ralf Franke from Kühne Nagel. I'm the project manager of Southern Africa. Um, one of the main uh, best working solutions would be private-public partnerships in the development of ports as well as of infrastructure to the hinterland. And another solution is to reduce the red tape, the required documentation, and to implement through bilateral agreements pre-customs clearance possibilities. Yes, there is a huge potential uh, for Africa in the future. Um, the average growth rate is over 5% uh, forecast for this year and um, international shipping uh, has to move forward. And the two main um, uh, problems or solutions really are the infrastructure and the governance uh, which, which have to improve and that can possibly be done uh, through creating a platform where all participants uh, engage in meaningful discussion to streamline um, the uh, clearance uh, in the various ports. Um, one of the greater solutions uh, to the problems of uh, delay uh, for shippers of, of uh, breakable cargo is that the African ports have to invest in the development of roads, rail, and the acquisition of relevant equipment at the ports. One, one clear solution to uh, dealing with the challenges that have been highlighted around African shipping, particularly as they relate to the port services themselves, is that there's a requirement for capitalization into these ports and that requires a significant amount of investment but as well as operation capability. Now, particularly in the climate that we're in where the commodity prices have uh, pretty much bottomed out, most of the African states are not in a position to make such investments. So a great opportunity is to do public-private partnerships um, where technical global partners can partner with uh, African governments and ensure that you've got the necessary investment required in the ports but also the necessary uh, skills coming through and within that period of time it allows you to upskill the local uh, operators as well as ensure that you've got uh, global and competitive um, infrastructure supporting your systems. We mentioned earlier about the vastness of the region and the complexity in terms of several ports to cover and the costs that are attached to that. All of these costs relate directly through to the freight and this is obviously something that we need to avoid in terms of becoming competitive in terms of shipping in, in Africa. I think really what we have found is that efficiencies are well, they are required to be improved in order for us to reduce these costs. Once that is a reality, I think then we can uh, move forward in terms of reducing the shipping challenges in, in Africa. Okay. Um, just one quick question for everyone. How optimistic are you? How, what, you know, um, when might, might we expect to see some significant improvement? Or are there countries that are already um, perhaps working on these issues and might serve as a model for others. Nigeria is making a lot of progress in that area. And starting with uh, concessioning the ports, and, 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 and they're working through a um, landlord tenancy model. And because of that, uh, the, the turnaround times for ships have improved. Um, uh, the uh, port efficiency as well has improved. So uh, for us uh, in Nigeria, uh, we were expecting that this situation would, would even apply to all of the ports so that uh, there's more efficiency in all the ports servicing the country. And we believe uh, uh, as well that once Nigerian ports are more efficient, it would be in a better position to act as a hot port for the sub-region. 
There's a very good example in Mozambique where the private port operator and Baira invested in two additional gantry cranes and the turnaround time of the container vessels improved dramatically so that there's no waiting time anymore. And the effect on the side is that also brake bike and bike vessels have a quicker turnaround time. That is the solution, better equipment and bigger efficiency. Yes, in fact um, we are optimistic that um, things will start improving in the medium term and uh, there is a lot of investment into Africa right now as we speak and uh, certain other ports have improved their efficiency so if that momentum can be maintained uh, we are certain um, that uh, we are moving ahead in the right direction. Excellent. Sounds like there's reason for optimism. Anyone else? Yeah? I think just to mention in, in South Africa there's a lot of investment taking place. Um, of course the South African ports have always been uh, pretty close to on par with a lot of the, the global ports in terms of infrastructure investment. But in addition Transnet has invested quite a bit and has got uh, capital expenditure to be rolled out as well in terms of further developments in ports. Um, uh, more optimized systems coming in and more infrastructure investment being made in that space. So in terms of a uh, more optimistic horizon, certainly that that is there um, and uh, a lot of that is being implemented already. Excellent. Thank you so much. We appreciate everyone's participation.